So, hi everyone. So today we're here with Olivia Hamilton, who's been recognised as the Monash University Leader of the Month for July. Um, she's with us now. Hi Olivia, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I hope you've been doing okay during lockdown and thank you so much for jumping on to speak with us. I'm really excited to chat with you. So, um, first off, congratulations on um, being recognised as the Monash Leader of the Month. How did you feel when you heard the, heard the news? Um, well, I was quite surprised. I didn't really consider it. Um, I mean, I was just running a training and dancing with a couple of the girls I coach and then all of a sudden I'm Monash Leader of the Month. So, yeah. Awesome. And who told you the good news? Uh, Mum told me halfway through maths class the other day. So it's a little <laughs> bit random. <laughs> awesome. So I guess before we get into all the fantastic stuff that you've been doing down at the club, um, we'll just get to know you a little bit. So um, how old are you and how long have you been playing footy? Um, so I'm 17 and this is my third season playing footy. I played two for Corfield Bears and this year I'm playing for East Brighton Vampires because we can get a team. At Fantastic. Football. Great. And um, what position do you play in football? Um, well, I started off forward and now I play back. Great. Good stuff. And, um, and so I guess... Why do you think you were nominated? What 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 do you think you've done at the club that's um, put you forward to be nominated? Um, well, I guess I just was sorry, lens <laughs> eating my fingers. <laughs> um, okay, so well, the club posted a video of me and the under twelve girls like dancing and having fun at training, um, which is something that people would want to encourage I guess and since girls football has been growing rapidly and no one and one of the focuses of many clubs is to encourage female coaches I guess that might be a reason. Absolutely yeah I guess there's definitely not enough um, female coaches you know just in our league or um, in general and it's it's really fantastic to see you know young leaders like yourself um, come through the ranks and, and start coaching so aside from being a, a player and dedicated in that sense um, how did you get involved coaching at the club? Um, well I have three siblings playing at the club my mum was assistant for my team and is now one of the assistants for my sister and my dad is trainer and helps coaching with a lot of clubs so I guess it just kind of runs in the family and it was a good opportunity to take up I guess. Awesome and, and what do you love about your club? Oh uh, just the friendliness of it like going down on a Sunday morning and everyone knows like everyone everyone's saying hi everyone's helping out um it's not that big of a club so we all kind of know each other we know all the coaches everyone's friendly. Awesome. Sounds like a great place to be on, on Sunday morning, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, what brought you into the coaching role? How did the opportunity come about? Um, well, I guess last year we kind of had a team, but then it kind of went, 2020 went to a bust. So since I couldn't, I didn't know if I was going to play this year because we weren't going to get a team. So I was looking for other things to do with my Sunday and how I could still be involved with football and the league kind of introduced um, the development program and mum found out and she was very encouraging towards me and a lot of other like leaders in the club were talking to me about it and said it would be a great opportunity for me to do so I took it on. Fantastic and so you did you have a, a coaching mentor through the program? Uh, yeah I do um, so he's the head coach and then I'm the development coach. Fantastic. That's great to hear you, you've you taken up that um, that opportunity as well. That's fantastic. So um, what what has it been like, you know, balancing playing and coaching? How have you how have you managed that? Well, we like fortunately, I've never had a clash like a full headstrong clash. All the times I have uh, COVID cancelled it, which is quite a coincidence. <laughs> but um, I just think my parents and relatives are really supportive of making sure I can get there to and from games and both the coach I coach with and the coach that I play for are very um, 
lenient with me. Um, the team I play for only has like 14 girls each week. So it's kind of, I more have to play with them, but I normally make it to most games. Wow. So like if you, if you finish up playing at your game and then you jump straight into the car and head off to the next game yeah. sort of thing. It can be like that sometimes. It's like <laughs> shoveling a sandwich down your throat, a five minute drive. Wow, that takes a lot of time management and dedication, that's for sure. That's very impressive. And <laughs> um, speaking about the actual um, coaching itself, um, you spoke about that, that video of you, you know, hyping up the girls, playing some music at training, making training really fun. Um, why do you think it's so important to um, bring that element of fun to training? Well, I think girls' body is just really starting out. And to get girls to keep coming back, we need to encourage that it's not just a hard ass sport and that we can have fun doing it too. And it's also really important to make sure kids are having fun at training so they actually try and use the time well and not just mess about. Yeah. And what's it like? Um, what what has it been like mentoring these girls that are, you know, five, six years younger than you? What's that experience been like? Well, it's not it's kind of just like I'm a big sister I guess in a way we just talk freely you know we'll talk about what they did at school while we're like practicing our kicking and I mean they'll listen to me but they're also my friends yeah that's fantastic and um you know playing music at training and um making it nice and fun do you have any favorite tunes that you like to play at training uh well we just normally play what's the latest kind of pop music sometimes the girls like to choose and in that one instance we were playing my kind of music which is country but not many people take to that oh really <laughs> so country is your it's favorite, favorite yeah oh wow oh awesome <laughs> so you're trying to trying to rally some people around to like country music <laughs> i don't think it's working very well <laughs> oh dear oh that's awesome I I love that you bring that element of fun to training I think that's fantastic and um do you have any any um you know it might be in the sporting world it might be in your personal life any female leaders that you look up to um well I guess Peter Searle was a great FLW coach for St Kilda which I go for Saints and mum goes for Saints so we tried to get to as many games as we could and it was just really great to see a female leader in AFL um, and I like the way she worked with the girls and she always looked like she was connecting with them and it's just great. <laughs> so um, yeah do you have any like players that you look up to along along with Peter any or any you know <laughs> other leaders? Um, well when I was playing for Bears I won this competition to have a coaching session with Mark Williams and I think just that like an hour and a half I spent with him, I learned a lot from him about coaching and it just made me see how like much thought and planning went into that session and how much dedication coaches have to their players. And I think I really like looked up to him for that. And I still like to see what he's doing, you know, in the AFL world. Wow, that's awesome. So was that a one-on-one um, a -on -one session? No, it was like my whole team. So, um, oh wow, it was really good. So we like he makes those special balls with the um, lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called, but so we got he, a couple of them donated, and the, it was like all on kicking precision, and we learned drills that we thought were really fun, and we could like talk through, but still we're focusing on and practicing our skills. Wow. And do you have like a, a one piece of advice from him that you still think about when you're when you're playing and when you're coaching? He was the first person who ever told me to follow through in my kick, mm. like to keep walking, keep moving past. And it just sticks in my head. Wow. In my head. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And what a great figure to look up to, you know, when you're when you're setting up drills and, and getting the girls to training as well. That's fantastic. <laughs> Awesome, nice stuff. And um, I guess in terms of um, bringing it back to leadership, um, what does what does being a leader at your club and leadership mean to you? Well, I guess I really enjoy helping everyone out and not just the team I coach, but around the club and 
seeing everyone and just being polite and knowing that I like may have been noticeable in their day makes me happy yeah do you do you try to um how do you how do you try to set that um that role model do you see yourself as a bit of a role model for the younger girls um I mean not really I just sorry (laughs) the dog wants me to throw its ball but if I (laughs) keep coming back um (laughs) I guess I just try to be my best self when I'm around them and make sure that I'm showing off my like positive attributes and that they can catch on and hopefully focus on making sure they're being positive and happy and working to improve their skills. That's great. I think positivity is definitely something we can all draw on in these times for sure during lockdown. That's a good one. And um where do you see yourself in the future? Do you see yourself playing or coaching or outside of AFL? Where do you see yourself? Um, well, I can't say that I love the city, so I don't really want to be there. So maybe I'll be in country football. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Do, do you, you live in, in Metro Melbourne, but you spend most of your time outside? Yeah. Yeah. So wow. we have a family farm that we spend most of our time on, so... Fantastic. And do you do you play footy out in the country as well? No. <laughs> no? Well, normally we spend lots of time at the farm during footy season because every weekend we're playing, but um Right. Yeah. yeah, at least this year you get plenty of time to spend down there. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Liv. It's been great to hear all about um all the great work you're doing at Caulfield. Thank you for having me. No worries.